I'm Don Sorrell. I'm with the Campbell County Extension Service and today we're going to talk about the Land Pride 706 no-till drill. This drill was purchased by the Campbell County Extension Service in the spring of 2019 and is available uh, for uh, rent and lease from Southern States which stores and manages this piece of equipment. This drill is designed to be uh, going into uh, sod uh, fields, hay fields and pasture fields and to renovate and improve uh, these fields by incorporating uh, legumes in there such as white and red clover and also cool season grasses such as orchard grass and fescues. When you uh, pick this machine up from Southern States, uh, they will give you basically an operator's manual and everything that I cover uh, this morning in this video will be uh, also in this operator's manual. Uh, before you go to the field and set this up, uh, please take the time and look at the operator's manual. Uh, it'll give you the guidelines that you will need in order to uh, adjust this on the farm to your individual field situations. Uh, it lays out uh, not only the adjustments of the cultures and the seed depth, but it also gives you the guidelines on how to set the seed settings for uh, rate per acre. Before you hook to this piece of machinery at Southern States is to make sure that the drive uh, pin is disengaged. This pin is located down here on the main shaft on the left side of the drill and it needs to be out in the out position. There's also basically a diagram here on the side of the machine which indicates when you're transporting this and actually when you're actually utilizing this machine in the field. When you get it to the on your tractor and raise the hydraulics up, you've got these transport uh, locks that you'll need to take off on both sides of the machine and the storage is up here with a clip and a pin in this assembly. And so those, these are to be used for transportation. And if you're going to store this piece of equipment like overnight, I suggest that you go ahead and put this back on the cylinders and let the pressure down on the cylinders onto these support. Look to your individual tractor. Uh, your tractor will need to have uh, two sets of hydraulic uh, outlets here to run this machine to lift up the uh, hydraulic uh, cylinders, which will raise and lower the machine. Set up with a jack, and basically a jack assembly uh, will stay here on the machine at all times. So when you're not uh, having this in, in the uh, storage position, please store the jack here on the machine. Uh, as far as hitch pin, uh, please uh, use a heavy duty hitch pin with a clip. And it's also got a chain breakaway that you can use for additional safety measures here as well. One of the things you uh, want to look at on this is make sure that the gearbox is set on number one. This lever here uh, does allow uh, the gears to move from one all the way up to four, but in uh, most cases uh, the setting should be stayed on one unless you're actually putting out a tremendous amount of seed such as soybeans, then you may have to go to the uh, number two gear. This side, as well as the left-hand side and right-hand side, has a grease bank. You can see the individual grease fittings here, which uh, grease the cultures in this case. Um, Southern states will do some greasing, but at, uh, by the book, you're required to grease this after about every eight hours of in-field uh, work with this. Once you get your uh, tractor hooked up and, and uh, get to the field and, and lower this machine, there's a couple major settings that you need to be looking at. Uh, the most important one as far as seeding depth is being able to manage the depth of the front coulters. The front coulters actually make a slit in the sod and that allows the seeding cultures to uh, penetrate the surface of the sod and drop the seed in. At the very uh, right corner of this machine, there is a knob here that turns right to left. If you turn it counterclockwise, it raises the front coulters up and puts less pressure on those. 
Uh, so one of the things you want to look at is if you're seeding a, let's say, orchard grass or a fescue type of seed, these front cultures should be running no deeper than, say, one inch in the ground. If all you're doing is seeding some red clover, then probably about a half to three quarters of an inch. So when you're in the field, uh, in the operating position, you need to be very much aware of how deep these front coulters are running. Uh, as they go over humps and dips, they will vary uh, in depth, but if you're on uh, fairly level ground, slope soils there, they should be running fairly consistently with the depth that you need in order to have good seed placement in the field. So be very particular as you go from field to field. Make sure you make any adjustments up here uh, that will control uh, how deep these front cultures are going into the ground. Uh, this particular machine is set up with two seed boxes. Uh, the larger seed box here in the front is designed for uh, orchard grass, fescue, uh, pearl millet, uh, even all the way up to soybean seeds in size. Uh, the adjustment here is right here in the front. Uh, in the book, we're, this is a seven and a half inch row spacing. So uh, in the book, when you identify the specific seed for each, each uh, planting, uh, it will give you a seeding chart and rate that you can need to identify. I've also included in this book uh, a seeding chart from the University of Kentucky, which will tell you how many pounds per acre for individual seeds, so that should give you some guidelines on pounds per acre. In this case, we'll use the orchard grass, for example, uh, for the setting here, and in order to deliver, uh, let's say, 10 pounds of orchard grass per acre, it will give you a setting range, and this range might be 75 or 80 or something like that. These numbers, to keep in mind, the they do not represent pounds per acre, but it's just a setting that reflects back to the book numbers for a specific pounds per acre. This machine is set up with a, a small seed box designed for your much smaller uh, seeds such as Timothy, uh, red and white clover. Uh, the seeding chart for this is also in the book give you the guidelines for making those seed adjustments. You can adjust the seeds here for the small seed box here on the back of the machine. And once again, these numbers here on this chart here refer back to the book number. So in, in other words, to get 10 pounds, let's say, of red clover, you're needing to set this about 30 to 35. So. Keep in mind, this is not pounds per acre, but refers back to the setting of the book. When you're actually in the field uh, running this machine, it's very important that you look and observe on a regular basis. Uh, make sure that the seed are coming out. You've got these clear visual windows here that enable you to determine if seed is coming out. And also if seed, for some reason, these uh, tubes get blocked, uh, these seeds would fill up these tubes and you can observe that. So that's something you want to do on a regular basis is to observe the seeding output here as well as down below for the large seed uh, box if you're sowing seed through that. As you're standing from the rear of this machine looking at uh, the back seeding disc, you do have a seeding disc which follows the uh, front coulter a disc here in this case where the seed is placed. Uh, you have seeding tubes that come down and actually drop the seed in that groove formed by the seeding disc. In this case, uh, the larger seed box is going to drop seed directly in the groove, whereas uh, the smaller seed box will drop uh, the smaller seed on top of the ground and barely in the groove itself. These are basically the packing wheels and those packing wheels are designed to uh, fill back in and compress uh, the groove made by the cultures. This will help the germination and help uh, get you the compaction you need with the seed to soil contact. There is an adjustment here. If you look in your book, it'll give you an idea 
but this is designed to uh, allow how deep the seating discs go in the ground in that uh, initial groove there. So there is some adjustments here. Uh, normally we have we like to keep enough pressure on, on that disc to allow that to stay in that groove uh, and still have some level of compaction here uh, with the compaction wheels.